Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week and then it is posted to our, our archives for you to watch um, at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where to access all those archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So um, please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think may be interested in our show. Um, we have uh, quite a variety of things here on the show. For those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska, and that is for all types of libraries. So you will find things on our upcoming shows and our archives for um, K-12, public libraries, academics, you know, colleges and universities, uh, corrections, museums, basically anything that's a library, it is, um, we could have a topic on our show. Um, we do a mixture of types of things, book reviews, interviews, many training sessions, uh, demos of services and products we think uh, libraries might be interested in. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff sometimes come on and do things that are specific to what we're offering here in Nebraska, but we also bring in guest speakers from outside of the Library Commission and outside of the state. Um, and we have a mixture of those today. Um, before we get into today's show, I just want to make a brief um, comment here about on our Nebraska Library Commission website um, related to the COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic that's going on right now. I'm just reminding people that we do have resources for our Nebraska libraries on our Library Commission website. The top post right here, as you can see, is a link to the resources we have available. This post is pinned to the top there, so it will always be at the top of our page. We also have a list of libraries with information in Nebraska as we hear about them or as they report to us whether they're opened, closed, um, special accommodations they're making for people. It was originally or for just closings. Now some libraries are working towards figuring out their opening and those that information is there as well. Um, on our uh, blog post about the resources. We have um, a form where libraries can report to us. This is for Nebraska libraries, what they're doing in their libraries. Um, and then you can see the listing of that comes up here and just automatically comes up in a spreadsheet. So you can see, check um, your local library or what your library's information is out here to make sure it's up to date. We also have a link here of lots of resources we pulled together for all sorts of different um, situations, um, businesses, uh, helping financial help, what do I do with my kids? <laughs> um, but I'll just highlight here the page about libraries where we have our reference staff here and a lot of our staff here at the Commission gathering resources to help our libraries through this time. So information about closing, um, reopening plans, suggested um, plans you can use as a basis for yours, uh, what to do with summer reading, what policies you have, um, all sorts of different links that we have in here. Uh, there's webinars we've seen that have been out there that we put links to that are coming up or that have recordings that you can watch for more information. So um, we're always adding to this, always updating it. So keep an eye on that if you're in Nebraska Library for more resources that we're gathering uh, for you. So. On to today's show. Today, I'm going. We have. We're going to talk about census. Uh, the census is still going strong. Our 2020 census outreach for libraries is the topic today, and I am going to hand over to our presenter first. So, Denise, I'm going to give you presenter control. Okay. So you should see the um, option to show your screen. Yes. Go ahead and click on that and get your screen up. Okay. There we go. All right. And then get, do your slides from the beginning and it should, there you go. They're full screen. All right. So this morning we're, as I said, we're talking about the 2020 census. It is still happening, still available. So you can still get your um, data in there. And with us today is Denise Davis, who's from our Morton James Public Library here in Nebraska City, Nebraska. Good morning, Denise. Good morning. And also with us on the line is Mary Sowers, who is our Government Information Services Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Morning, Mary. Good morning, everyone. And she's in charge here at the Commission for what all the information that we push out um, all about government resources in general, but at the moment, of course, uh, census being the big thing. Uh, what we're going to first is Denise is going to talk to us about what they've been doing at her library um, with the resources they've been given. So I'll just hand over to you, Denise, to take it away. 
Thank you very much, Krista, and, and thank you to Encompass Live for this opportunity to help further promote the census. I think it will go down in history as the COVID census. <laughs> so it's had a special <laughs> set, uh, set of challenges. Um, and so I'm delighted to be able to join you today. Um, I've actually participated in your previous one in March when you went over the census in general with Mary. Little did I know I'd be on it myself a couple months down the road. So again, happy to share and um, welcome all sorts of comments and questions as we go along. So thank you. Um, so let me tell you what we received and how we went about doing so. So uh, last year in the fall, ALA announced a grant opportunity. I believe it was in part due to the fact that this is a historical census now for many other reasons, but especially as most of you I'm sure are aware, the first time it would be available to do online. And so that afforded a great opportunity for partnership between the American Library Association and the census. So I'm so glad they did. And part of that partnership really is, is this grant because it was going to give many libraries across the country more resources with which to promote the census. So I saw this, I think it was maybe back in October when I, it came across you know, various listservs and was on the ALA side and I thought to myself, hmm, maybe I should look into it. I didn't say anything to anybody at the library. I just thought, well, they're only giving it to 25. So that first made me think I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> but then I thought, well, I have some background with the census. So this. Um, something called LUCA. You see the acronym there on the screen. That stands for Local Update of Census Addresses. Okay, and I had some familiarity with that because back as far as the fall of 2017, so we're going back more than two years ago, I was approached by our director who in turn had been approached by our city administrator at the time that he had received information from the Census Bureau as had all municipalities across the country because this is part of the census's prep for the census every 10 years. They have to clean up all the addresses, right? They don't want to mail those mailings we all received back in March to a lot of incorrect addresses. And so they give communities an opportunity to clean up those address lists. So the city administrator wanted to know if the library could help. He himself was not going to have time to do this. And so we said, yes, I mean, librarians, we love information, right? We love getting it right. So um, I personally was assigned this task. And so I started that in 2018. Again, I'm giving you this background just because it fed into the narrative that I put into our grant application. Um, so when I applied for the grant, which had a deadline of November 22nd, right around Thanksgiving last fall, um, we could only use 250 words to make our case. And for those of you who have applied for grants, that's, that's pretty basic, right? It wasn't a heavily involved, complicated grant application, which made it all the more appealing to apply for. I said we had familiarity with the census. We'd already gotten very involved in the community as we canvassed, in essence, the community to make sure we had correct addresses. Keep in mind, we had to review 600 pages of addresses. Nebraska City is just over 7,000 people. So in census speak, we comprise about two census tracts. Census tracts typically have anywhere between three and 4,000 people per tract. That's the unit of measure that um, census data is typically relayed through. And so we needed to review all those addresses. And how did I do that? Well, I compared what the census sent us, these 600 pages, to the county assessors list, as well as our local utilities, the Nebraska City Utilities. They were very helpful in providing their list of addresses. And so this is all you know, very confidentially done. All this uh, Census Bureau information is Title 13 information. So I had to work very much in tandem with the city administrator. The documents never left the city hall building. We were very respectful of the whole Title 13 process. And yet, when it came time to identify where there were discrepancies between the census list and local listings, I went out, did our version of field work, right? I was canvassing the community, comparing 
oh, are there really two apartment units in this building that looks just like a house? Or, you know, there's so much that goes into uh, getting a, a correct count. And so I really had this kind of, you know, boots <laughs> uh, in the ground background in, in working with census. So I put that in our narrative. And I also mentioned that we would build on trust that we'd already established as a bridge builder in our community. I happen to be bilingual in Spanish and have established many contacts with our local Latino population. In fact, our library even hosted a forum between the mayor, the city administrator, and the then recently formed Latino Community Committee. And there was great synergy there. And so the library has come to be seen as a, as a trusted place for our Spanish speaking community. And so we wanted to build on that trust. And so these items below that you see there in the award of funding were things we promoted to do should we receive the grant. So submitted it and right before Christmas, the week right before Christmas, ALA announced the awarding of 59 grants instead of just 25. And that's because they were overwhelmed with the response. Evidently, they received over 500 applications for these 25 grants. Wow. So <laughs> we were very, I was just overjoyed. I thought, oh my gosh, we got it. <laughs> and here's to give you an idea of the geographical disbursement of these 59 libraries. Okay. Um, and I cannot tell you what the different colors mean. I have searched high and low online ALA, everything short of calling ALA because they never really outline, you know, huh. what's a map without a good legend. But I, I don't know what these colors mean. So I can't answer that question. However, I can tell you where we are. Mm -hmm. Right there's the Martin James right there, and there's no uh, other library in any bordering state other than Garden City, Kansas. So wow. um, I was pretty pleased that we went ahead and tried for this. Right, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And so the mini grant is two thousand dollars, and um, ALA is very open to how we spend that. There really aren't any any restrictions whatsoever. So um, I wanted to show this slide as well because I think. It shows the reason behind it being such a good idea to have this partnership between the American Library Association and the census. Uh, I think this fact is just fascinating. Um, and the premise between ALA or behind ALA doing this was because there were so many hard to count census tracts. Um, a great desire to improve upon 2010's lowest response rate in some of these areas, right? And so that's uh, what Component to improve the response rates. It shouldn't be the same as 2010. Hopefully, there'll be a, a noted improvement. Although, again, the COVID 19 climate is, is proving to be a challenge there by all means. Yeah. So, I didn't really get started on working on this until January um, and had the very happy coincidence right when I was kind of putting in my, my calendar here and deciding what to do when. I, had the good fortune to be contacted by a Census Bureau staff member. You see her name there, Clarissa Suarez Russell. Perhaps some of you here in Nebraska have worked with Clarissa. She's assigned to our area. Yeah, um, she worked with us. She kind of detected us here at the Library Commission as well. Mary and, and has, has worked with her as well. Yeah, yeah, she's been very helpful. And it's just like I say, I, I didn't know about these partnership specialists when I submitted the grant. I had no idea. but. Um, it's just been a blessing because what these partnership specialists are assigned to do, they have been specifically assigned to work closely with census tracts that had low responses in 2010. And of the two tracts that we have here in Nebraska City, one of them was a lower response, meaning mm -hmm. in their census terms that there was non-response of over 20%. So across the country, any census tract that fits that metric in terms of having over 20% of its citizens not responding, then they are identified for these resources now in this 2020 census of, of a partnership specialist that would work with them to help promote, provide more resources, et cetera. And that's why I just give a great shout out to Clarissa. In fact, I suppose one of the Clarissa might not be speaking with you today since she did speak with <laughs> All of you at the commission about this. Um, so, right as soon as she called, I said, Oh my gosh, you have know, this great. And she on her end didn't know we had the grant, you know. So, it's like this great merging of, of new resources that happened when we had a chance to put our heads together. And so, she came down to Nebraska City within days of that phone call. And 
met with our local economic development office as well as our equivalent of the Chamber of Com Commerce and Tourism to share ideas um, and how to go forward. Mind you, some of you might be in communities that have what are called census complete count committees and Nebraska City had elected not to form one of those. So in mm -hmm. essence, we're kind of the equivalent, if you will, of, of a semblance of a complete count committee with our efforts. And so I had an additional meeting with Clarissa. She came right to our library. We met speaking for you today. And so in February, we just took off. February, we just took off. That's me and the table that Clarissa and I managed to get. She took the photo, actually. So thanks for the lovely table skirt. I wouldn't have had one of those myself. <laughs> but we started out with Rotary. As you all know, Rotary is a great way to get the word out about different initiatives and programs. And so um, the mayor happened to have the program in February. He wanted us to talk about the census. He too had And he wanted to introduce Clarissa at our local contact. So Clarissa and I together spoke at, at Rotary in February, and she brought half a strip, all of them, and had plenty of materials to distribute. The image you see here is of the school enrollment at night at a local school, and it gives you an example of how we, have, from the beginning, have had materials in both English and Spanish. Um, you see there even the questionnaire itself in Spanish. And as those of you have already completed the questionnaire, you know it's it's so straightforward, only nine or ten questions. So oh, I, wanted, yeah. I wanted people to have a visual there from the get-go of how straightforward and, and easy it is. On in, Additionally, in February, Clarissa came from Lincoln and we went to a Head Start evening event, which was for both children and their parents. It was an activity night. So we had a chance to join them and give our little blurb. I actually took that display that you see in this image, I took it along with us to highlight the availability of responding in Spanish as well as materials in Spanish. Um, then after that event, I specifically visited uh, our largest and main daycare facility here in Nebraska City and took materials. I spoke with the director ahead of time to find out how many children were in her, her care and took enough materials for everyone to get I don't know if there are advice, and I don't have any on my slide, but that's another thing we source the census on this website. It just has so many versions of bookmarks. Some are bilingual, some target different audiences. There's one about oh. counting children and counting them right, counting them in the right place. So I made, made sure I took plenty of those bookmarks to the daycare facility. Um, again, you can see try to do things in as much of a bilingual manner as possible. Uh, Nebraska City, that was part of my grant narrative. We've experienced significant growth in our Latino population since the 2010 census. Um, we do have a large meatpacking facility, as some of you may be aware. And so that was an impetus, too, for uh, applying for the grant and trying to do more outreach to harder to count populations. Um, obviously, Facebook, um, have to use that medium, obviously, in our newsletter as well. So those are just some of the things we started to do in February. And as we all know, um, March started off fairly normal, at least in our part of the woods, and mm -hmm. that was the week or the month rather you all should have received something at home, right? So Clarissa actually came and shared, debriefed the whole staff at a staff meeting to coincide with when we would all be getting our own census um, call to participate and was able to answer staff's questions and at the same time, kind of give us some background for when we in turn would be helping the public. Um, because we all know as librarians how mindful we are of privacy and not wanting to cross boundaries as we assist our public, but also, you know, strike that balance between being helpful and, and respecting privacy. So that same month, I was able to promote census participation on our local radio show. And again, it was the very week that people should have been receiving their first mailing. There and said so many resources, I'm sure many of you are aware of reading, but they actually have a game called Population Bracketology, and it looks just like 
the brackets that people do during March Madness, I think was even the same number. There were 64 pairs of cities. You can either do the city version or the state version. And I encourage you, if you are in the mood for a game or want to do something fun online that's related to the census, check this out. Um, and it changes. I've done it several times, and they mix up the cities and the states each time. So you basically, okay, you have to choose which has the higher population, San Antonio or Cleveland. And then you choose, then you move on, and you find out at the end, you know, what the, the highest populations are. You can go by state or by city. So I talked about that on the radio show in the midst of no March Madness. <laughs> um, we also were in the local newspaper a couple of times. They've been really great um, about promoting um, what our activities were, as well as the general census timeline. I also had created a basic bare bones census cheat sheet, which we, at the time, placed beside our computers, as well as staff phones, and also on Facebook. both a tutorial, as you see there, available in both English and Spanish, as well as the phone option, because for many people who maybe aren't comfortable with English as a first language, um, they could call not only a Spanish hotline, but you know, 12 other languages at least are available uh, to call. But given our community demographics, we were honing in on the, the Spanish. And so um, we have this um, by our phone still here at the library. Um, and we also put it on Facebook because everyone does count. And now at this stage, you know, especially since paper is no longer an option, the last day to submit the paper was May 1st, I believe. And Mary, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that has come and gone. There's no longer a paper option. So that really now makes the phone even more important for those who may not be comfortable online and who have not yet uh, completed the census. Absolutely. And did they, was that, was May 1st always the paper deadline or did they make any changes to the deadlines because of the COVID-19? May 1st was always the original uh, paper. <coughs> okay. and then we're going to send out um, reminder postcards. Um, mm -hmm. The online response is now July 31st um, and they are still sending out postcards as reminders. Your reminders do that, yeah. yeah. So. Um, Mary, we can double check, but I did just double check with Clarissa um, before changing my last slide because I had had, as you'll later see on my last slide, the final date to respond online, and right. now that that has shifted as well now. Um, oh, so okay. You'll see it's people are going to have more time rather than less. Very um, cool. <laughs> which is a good yes, that's good news. <laughs> Absolutely. They're always changing the way nowadays. <laughs> so you know, always have to look. Think this is going to be remembered as the COVID census, you know, yeah. I mean, it definitely will be a factor. So what happened in March, as we all know, we had to pivot in all arenas of life. We had to postpone some things that were on our uh, list, if you will, to do. We'd even gotten permission, as you see there under the first main bullet, um, we were going to have a chance to promote display at um, at the local meatpacking plant. They had given the the green light for us to come and be there. Um, obviously, that could not happen in the end. We were also going to be stationed at all the local schools when they had uh, their primary night of parent-teacher conferences, where all the parents would be attending, and that we would be right there in route to where they had to go to, to give them that nudge about the census as well as some information. Uh, that couldn't happen either. In our grant proposal, we had pledged that we would have extended library hours to facilitate the online completion of mm -hmm. the census. That obviously had to go on the wayside there as well as church visits. Um, I had hoped to just quickly do a little blurb, you know, after services or after a clergy member sermon, um, as I've done with other events, but that couldn't happen now since many weren't even convening. And um, we'd also proposed to do a bilingual story hour, and I'm hoping we can still do a version of that during summer reading. So obviously, as you see there under the second main um, bullet, everything was canceled um, mid-March, which led, of course, to more online promotion of it. And that's when I really began to ramp up my personal delivery of Spanish materials to a local store, which you'll see more images of as we go forward. Our library has never fully closed, unlike many in our uh, state and across the country. We have stayed open to 
retrieve materials for our patrons. We have kind of a grab and go system set up in our lobby. So that has allowed me to continue to promote the census through those bags that go out. And I'll show you an image of that in a moment. And I also moved our census display that had been up in our main area to the lobby. So moving to April, it's going to be kind of interesting this year. It's going to be April 1st is the official census day, and then the final response day is October 31st, Halloween. So I find it kind of comical that it's, you know, <laughs> April Fool's Day and Halloween is <laughs> your census response window. Um, Great way to look at it. <laughs> and what you see there on the ledge are the bags of materials going out, and this is actually on census day itself. And I attached to each bag which they call it, um, saying, today's census day, you know, have you done this? We have a whiteboard in our lobby to would not change the message, but previously was, have you completed your questionnaire yet? And on that day, each person I saw from a distance, of course, from six feet at least, I'd say, oh, have you done your census? You know, giving them that verbal, personal mm -hmm. nudge, not just the, the printed word with their materials. And I continue to do that when I see people. They don't want to see me sometimes, I think, because I ask, well, have you done the census? <laughs> okay. Now, on the right, you have an image of El Mercadito, which is the main um, store I've been taking and keeping supplied with materials. Its proprietor is pictured there, Letty. She's been a great person to work with on this, and I'll tell you more about that. Um, coincidentally, on Census Day, April 1st, um, our library was mentioned in a piece. I actually contacted by ALA. I think I might have participating in one of their webinars in mid to late March and mm -hmm. made some comments on the webinar and I got a call from ALA's communication office just a couple of days later asking for permission to give my contact information to Smart Cities Dive, which I had not been familiar with yet. Some of you may be familiar. They do good pieces actually. And so they wanted to know what libraries were doing due to this necessary pivot of activity. And so um, I was very surprised that it kind of took on this um, form. But as you can see, they, they highlighted our efforts there in their piece that was actually published on Census Day itself. And so I increased my visits to El Mercadito in April to Letty's store. And I really highlighted, you can see on the left is what she's put in one of her windows. I mean, it's just like she's plastered her window. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a mixture of official census materials with something from um, Sesame Street, um, and what you see there, let's see, I just lost my, oh, here it is. Uh, I want to show you the one that's in the middle here. Okay, it's over here to the right, you have to find it, and given a translation of what that's saying, okay? That means nothing to fear, much to gain, win. And why do I have this? Well, again, it's part of my great narrative and my concern just visiting with locals and having an awareness of the, which never appeared, right? You all recall at one point there was the possibility of putting a citizenship question on the questionnaire, which mm -hmm. never came to fruition. But yeah. I just knew there'd be lingering kind of residue of fear about sure. the census because of that. So I really wanted to hone in on, on this. Lizzie, thanks to Clarissa again for providing so many I gave her a hefty supply of these to give to each customer. And actually, kind of where I have the mouse cursor right now, I have a, a label on there to give the, the hotline phone numbers that I had on my previously seen census cheat sheet. So, because here it gives the URL that they can get more information in Smash, but there was no phone number. And again, knowing that some of these people may not have access to a computer and the phone for them is the best way to, to communicate. So this, again, I have the phone number to each of these that I gave Letty. And because of that business too that I was making with trying to combat the fear and the reluctance to participate, um, mm -hmm. Library Journal picked up on what we were doing, I guess, and um, yeah. contacted me as well. This is just an excerpt of something that came out on April 10th. Uh, the URL is at the bottom for the complete citation. But our effort to fight fake census news, right? This is just mm -hmm. an excerpt from that piece. 
and highlighting that I'm taking those materials, including the postcard that I showed you, um, to the Department of Education and Public Education and Education Department. Thank you. Um, to, to Letty and her local store. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. And that's Letty, once again, a great partner. Um, I wanted to make sure, you know, this is where she is on the inside of her store. And she's holding up a, an older version, but I'll show you the newer version. This is no longer the one that everyone uses. That was produced by the census for its 2010 efforts as a kind of a coloring activity book for children. And so I've left copies of both that one and the current one with Letty to distribute um, to her customers. And she's holding up the, the proud partner our library windows and I want to bring that one as well because she's definitely the great partner. Okay, so various odds and ends here. Um, what did we use the money for that we got? Well, we purchased an extra laptop, earbuds, and many, 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 many dollars spent on photocopies because the census, as I'm sure many of you are aware of already, has produced so much. It, it can be dizzying sometimes how much is on their website that you can copy and reproduce and distribute. And of course, we want to do most of that in color so it's more effective, so that's more expensive. So um, also been copying the whole story activity book, which is 28 pages. So, you know, 28 pages in color, that really adds up, but we have the money to do it. Normally we wouldn't. So I've, I've really been, um, going kind of wild on that. Um, also participate in the seminar for this webinar that I mentioned earlier. And there is a, a full citation for the Smart Cities Census. But basically, if you just query your favorite web browser with Smart Cities and Census, it should come up in libraries. Um, we're also continuing, you know, doing the things that we can on Facebook to remember the census. Um, in schools, especially for summer reading program creators and um, people responsible for that, you might want to look at the, the plethora of things that are on this portion of the Census Bureau's website. I'm just blown away every time I go there, I see something new. And this is the area where you'll see the information and the ability to download the complete activity book that I've talked about. Also in, in Spanish, there you go. And it was kind of fun when I was at Letty's one time giving her some more materials. Uh, this image on the right, the Todos Contamos, she placed it on her window and one of her customers there at the time, she has stayed open the whole time. She limits it to three people mm -hmm. uh, in her store at one time. So I'm mindful of that when I go. And um, so I've been able to see a couple people each time I go. And some children were with their parents and they were actually standing next to the window where this image was and they were counting the little heads. On the <laughs> I thought, oh, this is so good. You know, Perfect. Right. just like the census does count them all. Yeah, that's right. So I need I need to bring her more more coloring books. Nebraska counts has done a great job here in, in our state with census information and making it available bilingually. I, I like their graphic there, the state of Nebraska full of people in its shape and then just bilingual from the very uh, get go on that page, all the information. So I wanted to just highlight that additional resource. And so in all in all, it, it's been a, a great partnership um, with the census, thanks to ALA. Clarissa has just been a godsend in terms of all the information, the constant contact, um, sending me updates. Um, she also, as I mentioned earlier, met with many community leaders, including our mayor. And um, ALA, due to this pandemic, of course, has been very flexible about um, our deadlines. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to, I think initially we had to submit a grant report at the end of July, which of course isn't doesn't make sense now because we're all continuing our efforts with the extended deadlines. Mm -hmm. So very grateful for that. Um, our future plans, well, obviously continue to promote the participation. Um, I'm hoping I can perhaps do another quick blurb on our local radio show, mm -hmm. um, perhaps in, to coincide with summer reading program. Uh, Clarissa is even sending us some swag very soon, so I'm really excited about swag. Who doesn't love <laughs> swag? And we can give that maybe away as prizes or so and have it connected with our summer reading as well. I also want to point out, and a couple of these I know are linked directly to the statistics in schools portion 
of the Census Bureau website, but Sesame Street and Dr. Seuss have some great resources as well that are census specific. Um, the Sesame Street workshop, you can just um, query that and you'll find you can actually uh, sign up to receive videos, posters, and more specifically related to the census. And then Dr. Seuss has some great um, coloring pages. And I know that is specifically linked to the statistics in school site. And then, as I was um, mentioning earlier, Clarissa has confirmed that the latest timeline they received from the head of the Census Bureau, he requested that there be a, an extension. Um, and so this should be it. I don't believe it would go any further than this because of the constitutional requirement that the Census Bureau present the numbers to the president by the end of the year. So we do now have until October. So that's a lot of time yet to really um, ramp up. So for those of you listening, if your library hasn't had an occasion to do much yet because you're closed or, you know, obviously living in these circumstances, there's still plenty of time to promote the census in your respective communities. And lastly, I would hope um, everyone's already done it themselves, right? <laughs> we on our staff, I know we all made a Online. And for the everyone counts the book, there's even a song that you can learn and, and do. I'm not going to sing now, you wouldn't want to hear that, but <laughs> reading, it, it's another resource that people can, can make use of. I did ours um, for my house online, the online version of it, and I, I think I had the memory of previous ones, and I don't know if it's a specific memory from 10 years ago or not but of like the paper forms and there's you know the short form the long form all of that and how many pages and pages it was and I was dreading going into it because I was like all right I sit down get my coffee figure out all these questions I'm gonna have to answer and really it's not that no it was less three minutes maybe for all the questions that they're even asking it's very very basic information that aren't digging down deep very much that's correct yeah to everyone, to LA, to the Census Bureau, to Clarissa, to you folks at the Commission and Encompass Live um, for this opportunity to share, and um, everyone counts. And I think this will be a census for the books. <laughs> census 2020 Absolutely. will go down in history. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And I'm glad they gave that extension of, of the deadline, too, officially, because that, I think, will help um, a lot of people who've had other things on their mind. So um, have not been able to maybe do this yet, yeah. Very cool. Um, yeah, all right, so thank you, Denise, that's great. Um, if anybody has any questions uh, for Denise about anything they did there at Martin James Public Library, go ahead and type into your questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, I just have someone say congratulations on what you've done, good job. <laughs> um, uh, she can answer some questions about anything they did in their grant. And uh, let's see, I think, didn't look like anybody's typing anything in right away. That's fine. You can always reach out to Denise at the library there with her email address. Um, if you do want to have any more, get any more um, ideas from her input, uh, share any of the resources she has available there. All right, so I think, um, uh, Mary, you said you had stuff to share too? Uh, just a little bit. Okay, yeah, I can hand over presenter control to you. Sure. If something, yeah, all right. I'm going to switch over to Mary's screen now, so you should see your pop-up. There we go. Right now I'm seeing your background, though. Oh, okay. Let me move uh, every. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, wrong <laughs> monitor. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Multiple monitors, you got to figure out which one is which. So now if you start from the beginning, let's see where it actually puts your slides. Yeah. Did, is it still showing with the slides on the left? Yeah, it's showing those, yeah, the presenter type view, not the actual full slides, yeah, so. Okay. The beginning. What you should be able to do in GoToWebinar is choose which screen you want to be showing, which monitor. Oh, okay. And you go to the sharing section there and there should be a little pull down and it should have monitor one, monitor two. And go to webinar and, and go to webinars. Your face. 
Uh, it's not working. I do apologize. Um, actually, I'm just going to go, just for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and, and leave it the way it is, um, just so I can. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you presenter control again. So I took okay. it back. And let's see here. Now when it does it, see if it does have a pull down with showing each screen. And kind of gives a little flicker. Oh, I see. Page. Yes, found it. <laughs> My apologies, now folks. Let's go, so pick the one that has the actual full size. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> um, good morning again, folks. Um, I really don't have a whole lot. First of all, I did want to mention that Denise is absolutely right. Um, the extension for responding to the census has been extended to October 31st, which is really interesting because I was just on their page this morning and it still had the original um, old date uh, versus uh, new date. Um, and if you go to 2020census.gov uh, and then click on get the facts, uh, a drop down menu says important dates. Mm -hmm. And then see operate, if you go below the calendar there, it's monitoring COVID 19, see operational adjustments. The uh, old timeline is still below that, so ignore it. Go straight to this operational adjustments, and it will. And if you scroll down, uh, it gives you the status of current operations. So mm -hmm. the self response phase originally was March 12th um, through Mar May 1st, and then just this morning it was still March. Uh, yes. Um, and then the revised schedule was March 12th through July 31st. It's been updated since I looked at it this morning. <laughs> so my apologies, Denise. Uh, but it is now March 12th through March 31st or October 31st. So um, the most up-to-date information possible. So change. <laughs> yes, <laughs> change from when we started the show this morning. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, anytime you want to know what's going on, you know, at uh, any particular moment, uh, the 2020census.gov is, is generally the most reliable uh, website to, to go to. Mm -hmm. So, um, there you go. Yep. There we go. Um, so, and you know, with that in mind, two main websites to remember. And is, did my screen change? Nope, you're still on the right one. If you just click on your slides, it should advance to the next slide. Yeah, okay. Um, the arrow forward. So, two main websites to remember, 2020census.gov and my2020census.gov. The 2020census.gov is the general information website. The my2020census.gov is the uh, questionnaire itself. And uh, so uh, just a reminder, you know, for those. Um, yeah, it's uh, not advancing the slide. Are you trying to advance the slides? Yes, it's not. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah go ahead, click on, like click anywhere on the main slide that you've got, the, the display one, and then use your arrow keys to go ah, right. There, there you yeah, go. Sorry. Do it. <laughs> um, go yeah, back. so. Anyway, a couple of other things I just wanted to cover is uh, some general statistics as how Nebraska is faring. Um, in general, of all U.S. households, all, almost 60% uh, have responded. Uh, currently, as of this morning, was 58.7%, so it is definitely going up. Uh, just last week, it was 58.2%. So, like I said, just it is going up. And Nebraska is still in the top five um, for the long time Nebraska was number one in response rate but unfortunately Minnesota has caught up with us and passed us <laughs> in a couple of other states um, so Nebraska is number four right now but we are still doing really really well at getting the word out to to and uh, households are responding which is always really exciting to see that our efforts are having effect so um, the other thing I wanted to show you um, is the 2020 census total self-response rankings. 
And if you go back to the 2020census.gov main website under get the facts, at the very bottom, it's response rates. So if you click on that, um, once the map comes up, there's a little link to an interactive um, part of this. Uh, this is just the general self-response map that you can see, but there's a little bit more detailed that I found really fun. And so, you know, if you want to point your uh, patrons to something, you know, uh, kind of interesting to look at. Um, under this 2020 census self-response by state, there's a rankings here um, highlighted. So if you click on that, it takes you to a Tableau public and it breaks it down by state, county, um, household responses by state, and then ranking by city. So what I did this morning was, um, and I had to play with it a little bit to figure out how it worked, but uh, because Nebraska City is uh, about 7,500 people, mm -hmm. um, you can narrow it down by population range. And I did, nope, not quite that much, one more. I think I did the 45 to, to 4,500 to 91. And then by state, I clicked on Nebraska. And it, it does take a couple of seconds to repopulate, so don't get frustrated. There you and, are. Um, so it changed by county. Uh, Nebraska is still number four between, by state. Uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and we're number four. But then if you drop down to county and then you scroll down a little bit, Odo County is supposed to be there, but um, so they're on the city one. Yeah, in the right. city yeah. one, Nebraska City came up. So if you click on Nebraska City, it comes up with a little box, and then you can. Um, it will take you to again takes a couple of seconds. <laughs> mm -hmm. Goes you the city, and. Um, the response rate and Nebraska City is at 65 percent, so at 65 and a half. So they are actually doing really, really well. And uh, and I am sure most thanks to Denise and all of the things that you did. That I'm Marie, sure that's why that is so high right now. <laughs> and Marie, could, if I could just, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, I just wanted to point out the reason that looks so funny there. I mentioned Nebraska City is two census tracts, so that's what you see represented there. Yes. Uh, one tract is one shade of blue and the yes. central one, and it's the central one that had the lower response rate, so you can also play with census tracts on the screen that Mary's showing and, yes. in, and, um, on the, and get the actual percentage, and the percentage rate for that smaller one is lower. Yes, yeah, so if you hover over it, yeah, you can see mm -hmm. that uh, totally it's only 60%. Um, and then if you hover over this one, um, it's a 70 percent. Right. Yeah. yeah, but still, I am sure it's much higher than it would have been otherwise without your efforts, Denise. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but <laughs> got to keep going. Got to keep going. Got to get higher. Yeah, absolutely. And um, let's see. I think. Um, Yeah, I was going to run into uh, and see if I could locate um, Lancaster County real quick, but I'm not going to take, oh, oh, Lincoln, Nebraska, there, okay. No, that's Lincoln County, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, I just wanted to point out that little uh, rankings map so that you could uh, play around with it and find some really interesting facts for your own county or community uh, mm -hmm. or, you know, in some instances you have multiple communities you know within your county and uh, you can display the statistics you know to people uh, put up a sign uh, put it on your Facebook page you know Instagram or, or uh, Twitter you know things like that um, just to maybe create a little bit of a competition and uh, that's what I did with the blog posts and uh, some of the Facebook posts that I did was 
Nebraska's number one, you know, let's do it, let's keep it that way, or, you know, as it was going down, let's, you know, uh, still a little bit of a competition to uh, keep things going. So, um, going back to my slides, um, here we go. There you go, yep. <laughs> um, again, real quick, just some real fast ways, you know, to remind people of how you can get the word out. Do your social media, uh, not, and as so far as, social media do facebook twitter instagram blog posts on your web pages you know whatever way you have to get out the word and i know money is tight right now and that's why social media is a very uh economic option is because it doesn't cost a lot of extra money to get the word out that's that way um so like for example i've been doing blog posts here on the commission web page but I've also been doing posts on my own personal Facebook page um, to try to get the word out. You know, anytime anything new comes across from the Census Bureau, I've been trying to post it, um, especially on my personal Facebook page to try to reach a wider audience than just um, here in Nebraska, for example. Um, mm -hmm. Emails, if you're in um, contact with any of your patrons by email, Put in a, a, a quick word about getting the word out and make sure they respond to the census. Um, I've already mentioned blog posts. If you're in contact with any of your patrons by phone, in the conversation, be sure to mention, uh, have you responded to the census? Um, displays, and I realize that a lot of libraries are not open right now, but you can still do window displays. Mm -hmm. You can do displays inside the library, take a picture of it, post it on your Facebook page. Um, paper reminders. And now this is where, unfortunately, sometimes it's cost prohibitive, but like Denise did, they did bookmarks. You know, put a bookmark in everything. If you've got, you know, if you can run off some on, uh, your copier on some paper, just and then just cut them apart. You know, get the word out that way. <laughs> um, and also, too, as you're advertising for summer reading, which Denise already uh, mentioned, and uh, which kind of goes to show she and I were kind of on the same wavelength this morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, put in uh, as you're advertising for summer reading that your uh, that people still need to respond to the census. So. And if you want to subscribe to emails that uh, so that you're getting census updates, um, go to census at subscriptions.census.gov and they will uh, sign up for the emails. They come every week, sometimes several per week, but there's lots of things that you can do just based on what they send you in the emails uh, in sharing the word, you know, to, to get things out. So that's something that just anyone in the general public just couldn't sign up for. It's not like a specific library thing. Absolutely, yes. Anybody can sign up for it. So if you've got patrons who are interested in what's going on, you know, uh, with the census, you know, they can uh, receive emails as well. It's not just for librarians. Yeah. Um, and this is one example that I came across that was a result of an email that you could put out as a Facebook post or on your uh, library webpage. The results of the 2020 census help determine how hundreds of billions of dollars in federal funding flow into communities every year for the next 10 years. That funding shapes many different aspects of every community, no matter the size or location. And I followed up with impact your community, respond now, my2020census.gov. It's simple, it's straightforward, um, it's, it's not overly wordy, and even if you don't want to use this you know, in your post, just use this, you know, and it, it may catch someone's eye and they go, oh, I still need to do that, you know, that type of thing. This is another example I found um, how the state of Georgia is trying to get the word out. They created this and put it out. Um, that it's not too late, respond today. <laughs> you know? So there's lots of ways that you can do this and lots of variations that you could do. Be creative, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy, um, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Especially since they just changed that deadline date, that would be something to now grab and like. Yes. Modify one of these kind of things to say, just extended the deadline. People love seeing those messages about new deadline being, deadlines being extended. Yes. 
exactly. Yes, that's correct. That is and, the you know, push for promotion. Um, yeah. Several of them that I so several of the graphics I saw actually had just a picture of a clock, and it's not too late. <laughs> so you know, it doesn't have to be fancy. Just enough to get somebody's attention so that they um, so that they do that. Um, also at census uh, bureau uh, census.gov there are promotional materials and so uh, feel free to go there there's lots of information um, overview materials guides and toolkits audience specific materials you know especially for uh, second language and uh, so feel free to go there and uh, browse around and uh, you can print things off, you can download and print off, um, and then you can request items, you know, like posters and things like that. Um, like uh, Denise requested or re mentioned, you could also collect, uh, oh, I apologize, my voice is starting to go. Um, you could also contact Clarissa um, and she might be able to deliver some posters and promotional materials to you. Uh, we just received some uh, poster, posters, and I wanted to share that picture. They, these are up now in our uh, front window here at the commission, and uh, she gave us a whole packet of each. So I put up three and took a picture, and so I apologize for the reflection. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, very good-sized posters bright eye-catching yes. and um you know you can put them up and um like uh, denise did around nebraska city you know put them up all around town mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, these don't cost these would be free to get from yes as well yeah there's no cost for these pre-made yeah, the actual promotional pr materials from the census itself are free Right. So this, if that is a, a, a concern, is the cost for you to print out your own things. You don't have to order it from them and they can send it to you. And it's, yeah. Yes, that is correct. Right. Um, this was one of the things I wanted to mention about doing blog posts. And this is just the last in a series that I did about the history of the census. Um, yeah. the Those are really interesting. <laughs> yeah, things you never thought about never knew about it. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, there were 20, I, there were 23 posts leading up from the very first one to the one that we're doing now, which turned out to be perfect timing. And it just gives uh, a history of uh, who was the president at the time, uh, what the guidelines were, and then um, essentially changes from census to census. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously the first one was have somebody had to walk around and actually talk to people to get them, um, gradually moved to paper and then mail in. And now we have advanced to the point where you can respond online mm -hmm. and by telephone. Um, this, this was another blog post that I did where you know, this is an email that I get. It's called 2020 census infogram that has all kinds of information of, um, you know, relating to the census, how it's going. And this one was uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So uh, still, and this is uh, also geared towards just the Denver, Dallas region, which is where Nebraska falls. So we're kind of the middle swath of the country from um, North Dakota all the way down to Texas. And I also wanted to mention the Nebraska Counts webpage, which Denise mentioned earlier. And um, this one you can uh, post, share on Facebook. But I also just wanted to double mention that uh, it's in English and Spanish. And uh, so I, I found that you know, very uh, timely and very interesting so that we can help our second language uh, patrons. So um, that's all I have today. Um, but uh, just wanted to you know, throw out some other ideas for you to be able to use. And if you have any questions, feel free to call or email me. And um, again, Krista, thank you for having Denise and I on today so that we can continue to promote this. Yeah, I was glad to be able to get you on the show so quickly, Denise, too. I know I just reached out to you like a week or so ago about this. Um, it was actually at Clarissa. Clarissa had notified, let us know um, that, um, hey, by the way, there's this library in your 
say then. <laughs> Maybe something we heard about back, because I have like vague memory of when it was announced, like you said, back in December, but now it's months and months later and everything else is going on. Um, only so many brain cells working to remember everything. So I'm glad she, you know, gave us, gave me the nudge to, gave us the nudge to do this with you. Yeah. No, and could I just say, you know, she's just been a godsend all around. And to anyone out there who, you know, thinks, oh, so much Denise thank you so, thank you Mary thank you. Um, sure, anybody thank any you. last minute desperate questions you want to ask right now you can we're just a little after 11 o'clock so about ready to wrap up the show but you do have um, Denise's contact info from her slides Mary's from here um, both of these slides presentations will be available when we put the archive up as well um, Denise if you send me your slides um, after we're done here I'll be able to include that with our um, on our archive page okay so you'll have access to all their resources so I'm really glad yeah, this is great um, that's amazing all the stuff you're able to do Denise with with the grant and it, it was only two thousand dollars so um, not a ton of money but it got a lot of um, uh, a lot of work out of it yeah from from yeah, ALA. I'm glad they expanded that to location too. sorry no I still have something to spend <laughs> yeah awesome. nice, great. Well, nice still got time. yeah that's a good problem to have absolutely <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go back to my screen here. Whoops, no, 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 stop. There we go. That's the right one, okay. All right, so um, yeah, thank you. That wraps it up for um, today's presentation. Um, this is the page for our, our show here, and I'm just gonna show you here on our Encompass Live page. Um, the show has been, is being recorded right now, and it will be here on our website. Um, by the end of the week, I'll say, as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me with everything, um, I'll have it on here. These are upcoming shows, but this is where our archives are. A link there right after all of our upcoming shows. And it'll be the top of the list here. The most recent ones are at the top. This is the one from last week. And last week we just had a recording, it was a live recording, but there'll be a link to recording and a link to each of the slide presentations will be on here for you to access. Everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the archive is ready. We'll also push it out to our various social media too and our mailing lists. While we're here on the archive page, I'll also show you, we do a search feature here so you can search our whole um, archive uh, as far back as you want to. You can search the whole archive or just the most recent 12 months if you just want something very current. And that is because we do have our full archive here from the beginning of the show. Encompass Live premiered in uh, January 2009, and we do have, I'm not gonna scroll all the way down, but we do have our archives going all the way back to the first show. So um, do pay attention when you're watching our archives to the original broadcast date uh, of when it was first put out there. Some of the information may have changed since it was originally broadcast. Some um, websites might not work anymore. Links might be broken. Services might have changed completely into over time. Um, some of these things are very still very current, um, even years later with good information, like Best New Children's Books of 2017. They're probably still good books now, too, to read. <laughs> but some of our um, sessions may be um, old information. So just pay attention to the date or limit your search just the most recent 12 months if you want to. We do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live as well. You see I've got a link here. and I've got a link on each of our individual shows. So if you do like to use Facebook, uh, give us a like over there. We post reminders about shows. Here's a reminder to log into today's show. When our um, recordings are available from, uh, here's a announcement of last week's recording, when new shows are coming up. So you'll see reminders on here um, of that a couple of times a week. Um, I post things out there on our Facebook page. So give us a like if you do. Um, Want to use Facebook. Uh, so that will wrap it up for today's show. I hope, you hope you'll join us next week when our topic is Reading for Justice, a database for YA and youth literature. Uh, this is a database that was done um, from librarians in um, 
McAllister College in Minnesota, St. Catherine University, um, they put together this database of some specific resources for youth and children's literature. So we're going to have um, some of them will be joining us all remotely as well. You know, Income Public Lives Remote Show. We can keep doing it online as long as needed, no matter um, what kind of pandemic is going on out there. Since we are all online, everyone can just come in remotely as we have today. All three of us in completely different locations. Um, we can keep doing that. So this will be our topic for next week. So please do sign up for that one or any of our other shows we have here. You see, I've got everything booked through June. I even have dates that I'm confirming um, for July. So keep an eye on our schedule for um, more upcoming shows. So thank you everyone for attending. Thank you again. This is a great show. And I hope we'll see you another time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.